Greetings and welcome to the Golf Beat Show. It's Steve Bamford here from Golf Betting System. I take it that you are well. We're covering the 2023 Waste Management Phoenix Open on this week's show. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gambler aware. You can visit begambleaware.org for more information. And of course, please bet responsibly. Don't forget to visit Golf Betting System, the number one free golf betting resource. The Golf Betting System podcast is now out there. It's on this channel. It's also available wherever you listen to your golf betting pods. On top, all DraftKings pods. On top of that, two previews. One for this week's Waste Management Phoenix Open. Paul Williams has pulled together his preview for the Singapore Classic on the DP World Tour. We have supporting data all available at Golf Betting System. Strokes gain data this week for um, the, the Phoenix Open is absolutely fantastic. I'll put a link to all of this in the description box, including our free-to-use predictor models. Now, the predictor model for uh, Phoenix has only just been released. I won't be going through it on the show. That's my next job, to actually build a prediction for um, Phoenix. On top of that, but you can use it, so get stuck in. Um, all I need from you guys. Now, we hit our 100-like target last week. Thank you ever so much. I actually feel wanted. I actually feel wanted when you gave me 100 likes. We actually got 130 odd. Now, of course, when you achieve a target, you need to raise a level. So this week, I reckon 115 likes. Please, 115 likes. It's not, you know, it's not millions because we don't get millions of views. All I need you to do: be logged into YouTube or Google. Just press the like button. Easy as that. 115 likes. That'd be fantastic. We've got lots of new subscribers at the moment. We are building towards the Masters. Welcome to you all. If you are new, press the subscribe button. Make sure your notifications are switched on. We do a PGA Tour vi uh, video every single week. All the way past Phoenix, past Riviera Country Club and Tigers uh, Invitational into the Florida Swing. Once we get to Florida, you can almost touch, almost touch the 2023 Masters. So join the channel. Enjoy the ride. Right, the Waste Management Phoenix Open, always one of the better tournaments, I think, on the PGA Tour. It's now been given this elevated status. It's loaded. It's a mini-major. It's great. It's fantastic. Everyone, of course, focusing on Rahm versus McElroy. For me, I think the, the winner will come from players sub that level. Let's talk about the course. We see it each and every year. It had a Wisecoff redesign in 2014. Made it slightly more difficult than what it was. But my course categories, uh, you will find these in the predictor model. It's a desert golf course, obvious. It's a mid-score golf course. And when I read out that Scotty Scheffler shot 16 under here to win last year, Ketka was at 19, Simpson at 17, Fowler at 17, Gary Woodland at 18, Hideki Matsuama at 17. When he defended, you get the gist. That mid-score. It's not resort. It's certainly not technical. Um, it's played at altitude. Not many golf tournaments these days are at altitude. The other one regularly in the desert is the one that they play in Las, in Las Vegas, which is the Shriners. Uh, they also played the CJ Cup there a couple of times in recent history. Um, trying to remember the idea. I, I can't remember the two courses. But yeah, you can look into those. Um, uh, water hazards are in play on six of the 18 holes, and they really are in play. It's a par 71 on the scorecard, 7,261 yards. Take away the altitude, 8 to 10%. This is a sub 7,000 yard par 71. Gettable, gettable, gettable. Especially when you read that the greens are over 7,000 square feet on average. They're huge. But, and this is where the course defends itself, they let the turf conditions here for the PGA Tour get pretty firm and fiery and releasing. So, long, long carry on fairways, but... From even Friday afternoon on, especially into Saturday afternoon, you start to see greens that deserve respect. They release. Yeah? So, releasing greens, faster green speeds, slightly higher scoring. They're not receptive greens. There hasn't been a lot of rain in the build-up. There's no rain in the forecast. Tie that in with a forecast that says 15 mile an hour breezes on a couple of the days, maybe even three. That's enough to keep that mid score level of, of winning total around here. It's enough to keep these players on their guard. <coughs> um, the closing stretch, very, very exciting. 14 through 
15, 16, of course, 17. I love 17. That's the hole I love. And the closing 18, that uh, right to left dog leg, absolutely fantastic. I love the waste management Phoenix Open, and I love the climatic finishes that you get here. Key player skills are required. We can look into this for you. It really is all about ball striking. So, strokes gained off the tee of the winners, going back to Hideki Matsuama, first and second wins. Uh, within the field, uh, the champions averaged 10th off the tee. They averaged 12th on approach, 27th around the greens, 6th tee to green, 18th for strokes gained putting. Again, tee to green 6, approach 12th, off the tee 10th. That is strokes gained ball striking. And you're seeing Matsuama, Scotty Scheffler. You're seeing some players there, even Ricky Fowler when he's really on form. Long off the tee. You can't be long, monstrous and erratic here. It's about total driving. But when I say total driving, I mean, that's a bit of a fake stat. It's about driving that is moderate, if, if to long, but straight. And you can see that also in the uh, traditional statistics around here. This goes back to 2016 when they... Uh, 20, uh, 2015, Brooks Kepka. Um, you can see that across the winners, driving distance 17, driving accuracy 21st. Now, we see some PGA Tour tournaments where driving accuracy in the 40s. So you do need to have an element of straightness here. Scotty Scheffler, for example, last year, 18th for uh, fairways hit. Uh, Brooks Kepka 27th. Webb Simpson, 3rd. And that's the point. Webb Simpson was 44th for driving distance, but 3rd for fairways hit. So moderate, can work. But dead, dead straight. Scheffler, longer, but not overly erratic. Same as Kepka. Ricky Fowler hit almost 70% of fairways when he won here. So I'm looking for good drivers of the golf ball. Greens and regulation, fifth. That's an extremely high number. So, strokes gained ball striking or the old-fashioned ball striking metric. That's exactly what we are looking for this week. Um, I won't go through the predictor model because I need to build a predictor because of this Pebble Beach Ferrari that we had this week. The uh, predictor model, though, is available in the description box. Rolling eight-week stats. Now, we know strokes gain T to green is critical. So here's the top 12, and I've put full top 25 rankings in this field over the last eight tournaments in my betting preview, which you can access down below. <coughs> top 12 strokes going tee to green last eight tournaments. Tie for 11th. Patrick Cant uh, Cantlay, Tyrrell Hatton, Xander Schofley, Justin Thomas. There's, there's a pack. A tie for 9th. Tommy Fleetwood. This name might surprise you. Johnny Vegas. 8 is Cam Young. 7 is Tony Finau. 6 is Corey Connors. 5 is Scotty Scheffler. 4 is Max Homer. 3 is John Rahm. 2 is Colin Morikawa. Number 1, Rory McIlroy. Strokes gained on approach. Top 12. 11. Um, tie for 11th. Russell Knox, Xander Schofleet, Scotty Scheffler. 10. JT Poston. 9 is Justin Thomas. 8 is Tom Kim. A tie for 6th. Rory McIlroy and Cam Young. A tie for 5th fi uh, place, rather. John Rahm. 4. Corey Connors, tied with Tony Finau. 2 is Colin Morikawa. Number 1 is Max Homer. Strokes gained off the tee. Top 12. 12, Kevin Kisner, there's a name. 11, Victor Hovland. 10, Gary Woodland. 9, Joel Damon. 8, Cam Champ. A tie for 5th, Corey Connors, Tyrrell Hatton, John Rahm. Uh, 4 is Scotty Scheffler. <coughs> 3 is Colin Morikawa. 2 is Cam Young. Number 1 is Rory McIlroy, of course. And strokes gain total, top 12, last 8 tournaments. That takes us back to the Houston Open and the Ned Bank Challenge on the DP World Tour. So back into November of last year. Top 12. Corey Connors is tied with Terrell Hatton at 12. 11 is JT. Uh, eighth, Lucas Herbert, Kevin Kisner, Xander Schofle. Uh, seven is Scotty Scheffler. Six, John Rahm. A tie for fourth, Tony Finau and Max Homer. A tie for second, Colin Morikawa and Alex Naren. And number one is Rory McIlroy. Some really interesting names in there. Lucas Herbert, for example, playing some great golf worldwide. Uh, you've got JT in there at 11. Corey Connors. I know that Barry, ha Barry uh, O'Hanrahan has put him up on this week's Golf Betting System podcast. 
So that's the rolling eight-week stats in the rearview mirror. Historic odds of winners. Now listen up, people. Scheffler, 30 to 1 last year. Brooks Kepka 50 to 1. Uh, Webb Simpson, 14 to 1. Ricky Fowler, 22 to 1. Uh, Gary Woodland, 50 to 1. And Hideki Matsuama, 11 to 1 and 28 to 1. If we go to where they split the PGA Tour up between fall and all that rubbish, uh, we won't be able to say that soon because they're going back to actually starting in January. Amazing stuff. Past nine renewals, the average here is 41 to 1. If I go back to 2010, the average is 47 to 1. A 40 to 50 to 1 winning average on this tournament. That, to me, suggests I'm not back going anywhere near John Rahm. I'm not going anywhere near Rory McIlroy. Opens things up. It's the tournament, kind of tournament I love. Also noticeable. Uh, official World Golf Ranking of winners. Scheffler was 15 last year. Kepka 13. Simpson 11. Fowler 14. Woodland 53. Matsuama 5. So if I take Matsuama, Fowler, Simpson, Kepka, Scheffler, I've got a range of official World Golf Rankings from 5 to 15 winning this. Five of the last six times on uh, at the Phoenix Open. Now, I'm just opening this up, living on the edge, giving you the kind of information that you're looking for, the current world rankings. So let's work it through. <coughs> Five, Patrick Cantlay. Six, Xander. Seven, Colin Morikawa. Nine, Justin Thomas. Ten, Matt Fitzpatrick. Eleven, Victor Hovland. Twelve, Max Homer. Thirteen, Tony Finau. Fourteen, Tom Kim. Fifteen, Sam Burns. Your winner could well be in there. Let's expand it slightly to 20. Cam Young, 16. Spieth, 17. I wouldn't back Jordan Spieth this week with your cash. 18 is Sung Jm. 19, Billy Horschel. 20, Hideki Matsuama. Cam Young. Love the look of Cam Young for this. Just hate, hate, hate the fact he played the Saudi International last week. Because I'm not seeing winners that have been the previous week around the world globe trotting in the UAE. Doesn't happen. And I think at some point, the travel is all going to catch up with Cam Young. Could be round one, could be round, round four, who knows. But theoretically, with the approach play, the driving and everything, this could be a Cam Young course. Oh, yes, it could. <coughs> I have got three of my tips within that set of players that I read. The one I haven't put in there, or the one I have put in, who isn't in that list, <coughs> is a guy <coughs> who's finished second, 13th, second, fourth, 11th and first here at Super C Scottsdale since 2010. He, um, sixth at the Fortinet so far this season and second at the Zozo, where he was in a shootout in Japan with Keegan Bradley. Quite a lot of carry over there between that uh, Narashino golf course and players that have played well around here. Don't know what that is, but it's true. He was 54th on 2023 debut at PGA West. But this is the thing that gets me. Uh, this player's form at, far, at the Farmers Insurance Open. Red, before this year. Miss cut, 61. Miss cut, miss cut, miss cut. 66, miss cut, 53, miss cut. A six miss cuts, a 53rd, a 66th, and a 61st. You can safely say he doesn't like the Farmers Insurance Open. And then lo and behold, I see him on the PGA Tour coverage, and he's on the fringes of the top 10 of the leaderboard. Eventually finished 11th a fortnight ago. Uh, he ranked 17th for off the tee, 9th for approach, 10th for putting. I am not saying this guy is going to win, because we know this guy it takes him about 14 um, ch attempts at contending before he eventually gets over the line at 12 to 1. But Ricky Fowler at 66 to 1 with ball sports, I've got eight places each way, is a cracking, cracking bet. Right now, as I record this, you can get 70 to 1 about Ricky Fowler with Unibet, six places each way. So I'm on Fowler. I'm then on three that I read out of that official World Golf Ranking list. 28 to 1, bet 365, eight places each way. I have to highlight bet 365 again this week. Bet 365, each way extra, 
every single week on the DP World Tour and the PGA Tour. So eight places each way. I'm always choosing a 50 odds. Market leading odds. <laughs> so you're getting the best odds and eight places each way. It's an absolute no-brainer for me. Three of my four bets yesterday on Monday afternoon, straight on the Bet365 app. Bang, 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 done. So if you haven't got a Bet365 account, and I know lots of you haven't, because they used to be absolutely awful on golf betting. That's fact. But now, with each way extra, they're bang on the pace. Love them. You can sign up, of course, via golf betting system to access a new Bet365 account. And why wouldn't you do that? I'm on Sung J M two points each way, 28 to 1, with Bet365. Eight places each way are 50 odds. This guy, him, his track record in the desert is phenomenal. Don't forget, he won the 2021 Shriners Children's Open. That was 16 months ago. That's played at TPC Summerlin. Now, that is a short, desert-based, par 71, played at altitude. You're getting me drift. He's also finished 15th, 13th, and 7th there at TPC Summerlin. That 7th was last year when he defended. Uh, those strong desert results continue at PGA West, where he's finished 12th, 10th, 12th, 11th, and 18th. Very, very consistent. And you remember I mentioned the CJ Cup? He was 9th at the CJ Cup that they hosted at the Summit Club. Now, the Summit Club, of course, is on the outskirts of Las Vegas at altitude. You see what I'm saying? He's in the top 25 for driving distance all drives this season. Love that. He's pretty straight. And recently, he shot a 63 at TP Summerlin and a 65 at Kapalua <coughs> in the first event of 2023. He's played here three times. His record reads 7th, 34th, and 17th. And I think... When you've got this Xander situation, Scotty Scheffler, all of these great players that played well around here, that will put a lot of Sanjay in. That's why I got 28 to 1 about a player who was fourth a fortnight ago at Torrey Pines. Hasn't won for a while. I like that. I just think he's a great bet. So Sanjay in, two points each way, 28 to 1 with bet 365. I've then got two 20 to 1 shots. I'm landing on Tony Fee now. Now, I think Tony Fee now, he's an interesting player this week. Don't forget, Salt Lake City, Utah. That is Tony Finau's home. He now lives, though, in TPC Scott. He now lives just up the road in Scottsdale. They reckon it's like a 10-minute drive from this TP Scottsdale course. So don't tell me he doesn't use this as a practice facility or at least play this course once in a while. He's always had a great record on the West Coast, but to date hasn't won in his own backyard. Fourth at PGA West in 2021, the American Express. A fourth, a sixth, a sixth, and a second at Torrey Pines. He's also had a second and another second, 2018-2021, at Riviera Country Club. You can throw in a second <coughs> at the Fortinet Championship that they play at Silverado in 2018. He's been all over California, Nevada, Arizona golf courses, but still yet to win. He's even had two playoff losses. One at the Genesis Invitational, which of course they play at Riviera Country Club. And he also had a playoff loss here to Webb Simpson in 2020. He lost the first one. That Riviera one was 2021 to Max Homer. 2020 here to Webb Simpson. So he's got course form. Um, and the thing that grabs me about Tony Fino, <coughs> despite three wins across his last 11 stroke play events, he sits 13th in the qualification standings for Team USA for the Ryder Cup. Yet yeah, 13th. He's behind Chris Kirk, Tom Hoagie and even Hayden Buckley. <laughs> That's madness. But it's the kind of thing that just ticks away in the back of these players. They know they need results. So Fee now this week. I mean, I was reading his name all over the Strokes game metrics. I really like his chances. So Tony Fee now, 20-1. We bet three, six, five, eight places each way. <coughs> and then finally, I am taking, um, um, I'm now on um, drugs to get rid of this cough. So we are getting somewhere. I have visited the doctor. Hopefully I'm not dying. Now, let's end this, not on that negative note, but on a positive note. 20 to 1 I got on Colin Morikawa. Current form of 326 is excellent, yeah? Can't argue with that. He hasn't won in the United States for almost two years. The Workday 
championship at concession in Florida. That was a world golf championship. That was his last win in the States. Do you think that's nagging away at the back of his head? Of course it is. In a good way, I think, a motivational way. His last PGA Tour win was the 2021 Open Championship at uh, Sandwich. And his last professional win was the 2021 DP World Tour Championship at the Earth Course when he picked up the DP World Tour title. He hasn't won for 15 months, Colin Morikawa. This event is traditionally very, very good at picking out players that haven't won for a while. Scotty Scheffler hadn't won for 30 months. He'd, he'd won on the Corn Ferry 30 months earlier to picking this up. 19 months for Brooke Kepka. 20 months for Webb Simpson. 23 months for Ricky Fowler. Three and a half years for Gary Woodland, and he came and won this. Doesn't tend to throw up winners that won last week at Pebble Beach, the week before at the Farmers Insurance Open, or the Century Tournament of Champions. Just doesn't happen. So, I'm loving Colin Morikawa this week. 20 to 1 about a guy that's got form of 3 2 6. Yeah, don't mind that. World number 7 sits within that official World Golf Rankings 15 slot that we were discussing earlier. Hasn't won for a while in the States, and he's got a great desert golf course record. He doesn't play a lot in the desert, but he, he won his maiden PGA Tour victory at the Barracuda Championship, which they uh, used to play, of course, at Montreux up in uh, Reno, Nevada. And on top of that, we were on board a few years ago at the Summit Club, where he lives and practices at, at altitude in Las Vegas, when he was second behind Rory McIlroy. So it all kind of stacks up. The one time he's played here in 2020, he finished 21st. You think, OK. He was second for strokes gained on approach and first for strokes gained T to green. If Colin Morikawa can putt at neutral or slightly better than neutral this week. He has to be a contender. So, those are my four to back. Morikawa, Tony Finau, Sung J Im, Ricky Fowler. It's been a blast. It's been quick. It's been great. We'll be back next week for Tiger's Invitational. Don't forget, 115 likes. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again next week. It's been a 